Hello everyone, welcome to another Revit video. My name is Mitchell and in today's video I'm going to show you how to import a point cloud into Revit and then just a couple of tips and tricks to get the modeling process started or some considerations to take into account. So let's get started. First thing that I'm going to do to link in a point cloud is go to the insert tab, select the point cloud item. Now you can import either an RCP or an RCS file. RCP is the recap project file, RCS is individual scan data. So you can select uh, which one that's dependent on the information that you receive. I already have a stitched together point cloud over here. So I'm going to be importing an RCP file and something that's quite interesting to note here is the positioning specifically. What I like to do is I actually generally want to import this center to center, not worry about origin to origin or shared coordinates. Even if your point cloud file is geolocated in the software that it comes from, it can be a little bit tricky to work with it when it's so far away from the origin here in Revit. So to make things slightly easier, we can import center to center, say open, and that's just going to ensure that our model, our point cloud model is going to fall into the center of our Revit workspace over here, regardless of the coordinates from the file. So what sometimes happens is that when the file is coordinated so far away from Revit's origin point, you generally have some issues. It's just a little bit more tricky to work with. So it's easier to say yes to this and let this import directly into the center of our workspace. I can geolocate it from here, which is generally one of the first things that I will do with this file. There are a number of ways that we could sort of go about doing this. Uh, let's say someone just let us know the positioning of a certain point in the model. Let's just say that for this example, it's just going to be this corner point right over here. If I know what that corner point is, I can just use from the manage tab coordinates, my specify coordinates at point feature. So. I do need to create a point for that location. So I can do this using the reference plane or I can just use a model line. What I like to do is just go as close as, as I can, get the point and really just create a single model line. I can also create an intersection like that if I like, but it's actually not necessary. I can just do one, go to manage, select coordinates, specify coordinates at point, And then you'll notice that I can hover over the end point and I can actually grip the point itself. And then I can fill in my information as required. So let's say that I go and I move it to the location where it's going to be. I won't worry about the elevation now. I will deal with the elevation in, in a separate step. I will say OK. And now if I go and I just verify the coordinates there by reporting shared coordinates and I click on the point, I can see that I have my information filled in. So my point cloud is now situated where it needs to be. And the next step that I would do here is to sort out my project north versus true north orientation if that hasn't been done already as well. So I would go and duplicate my floor plan view and then I would rename it. And let's say level zero true north. I will go and I'll set my orientation to true north. And then let's say that true north is in this direction for argument's sake. Then I'm going to go to my position drop down, rotate true north. I'm going to place my rotation right here on the arrow and I'm just going to rotate that directly upward. Right. So now we have our true north and we also have our correctly coordinated file in terms of the X, Y coordinates. We'll still need to deal with the Z axis as well. Okay, so again, let's say that we there is a known location here uh, that we know the elevation of. I'm going to create a section view through this um, and this is just good practice in general to create a section view to understand your point cloud file a little bit better. So going into that section view, I can immediately see that um, it's it's come in well below my level zero in Revit. Right. So let's say that I'm going to grip this file and I'm just going to use my move command and I can see that here is a, a very evident floor slab. So let's say that I'm going to use the top of that floor slab and I'm going to line that up with level zero. That's going to be my sort of ground floor plan. And let's say that I know the elevation of the top of this floor slab over here. Now I can assign the correct value in my section view by going to position, relocate project. And let's say that it's 15 meters for argument's sake above sea level. If I just click on level zero, move it up by 15 meters. OK, you'll see that I don't have any change at the moment because this information is being read relative to the project base point. I just need to change that to my survey point and that would give me my correct values. 
And then while I'm in a section view, the next thing that I would do is I'd actually start to create my levels, even just vaguely for now. A good thing to do is actually switch off the ability to be able to select links because you'll notice that as I'm hovering over my point cloud, it's constantly highlighting. I wanna switch that off by just disabling the select links feature, which will not allow me to interact with that item whatsoever. It just makes it easier to work with. So now I could move my level up to that location and then I would continue creating my levels at all of the relevant heights as required. And I can just move them or bump them down to where they need to be. And obviously create those going up the entire building for now. Next thing that I wanna do is, because this is a scan, this is of course gonna be an as-built structure. So if I'm implementing phasing, I would want all of this information to be on the existing phase. So I'm just gonna set everything to the existing phase here before I get started. And now I'm gonna go and set my phase to the existing phase. Okay, so that just makes sure that I've got everything on the existing phase. And now because my view is set to existing, remember anything that I draw, so a wall for example, automatically inherits the phase of the view that it's in. So all of my building elements will now be classified as existing as well. There are a number of ways to control point cloud visibility. One of the options that you might be interested in is creating multiple views. So if I have my level zero plan here, for example, let's actually just change this quickly to ground floor plan. So if I have my ground floor plan here, what I might do is just add a PC on the end for a point cloud. And then I might duplicate that, rename it to something like no PC or just no text at all, depending obviously what my naming convention is. And then here I would go into my visibility graphics and I would switch off the point clouds altogether just so that I have my normal model displaying in one view. And then obviously I have an accompanying floor plan, which also gives me access to the point cloud as well. It's nice to have a mixture of both because we obviously want to model onto the point cloud and make sure that the alignments and all of the required fittings, furniture, etc., are captured. But we also want just a clean model space to be able to see what we've modeled without the interference of the point cloud. So we could go through this process for all of our views if we want, we could create a, a 3D view as well. That is completely up to you and how you work. And I would also recommend doing it for sections as well. So you could create two sections, perhaps one cutting through the building in one direction and then another one cutting through the building in another direction. And then just have these two sections and then just move them around the point cloud as required. For sections, I generally just leave the point clouds on all the time. Because you may have a lot of different views, making use of view templates is gonna be quite handy. Another way to effectively work with scan data is to implement scope boxes. So if I go to my view tab and draw a scope box, let's say that I am focused on this area right here of the scan. I just wanna make sure that I'm working with just that. I wanna isolate that area. So what I can do is move my scope box, align it with the area that I'm working with, Okay, stretch it out to the size that I need it to be. Then I can go to my 3D view, make sure that the phase is assigned to existing. Here in my 3D view, I can now go and assign my scope box to the view. Isolating just that section of the scan and allowing me to work with just that section. I can very easily make modifications to this by disabling the scope box from the view and then selecting it and I will be able to assign a new height, for example, and then I can always just go back and reinstate that scope box to the view once again to crop it further. And then as I'm modeling, I can go back to my floor plan and I can continue to move this scope box around to the area of the building that I am busy with and I can rotate and resize it for each space. A nice thing that you also might want to consider doing is brightening up your elements when designing and floor plan. So if I go and build a wall along this existing wall, I can see that it's quite easy to lose that in the scan. So creating myself a view template where I'll go and maybe apply a slight transparency to the walls. And I'll also give it a solid pattern just so that I can very easily tell where I have placed my model geometry versus what areas of the model I still need to work on. I can implement this for floor slabs as well. So after modeling my floor slab, I can always go to visibility graphics, go down to floors. And now in this particular case, it's gonna be a projection. So I go to my patterns and I can also just give this a solid color. Let's say orange, for example. 
just so that I know what areas of the building have been completed or where I've worked on versus what I still need to complete. If you import an RCP file, Revit also has a visibility graphics section here called Point Clouds. And there it's actually got all of the scan locations that were used. You can switch off any amount of scans that you would like. Let's say that I want to keep on just the first 30 scans. So I can switch off the rest of them, say OK, and that'll give me just the first 30 scans. I can see here that's mostly just the ground floor. So if I took the scans myself and I know the scan locations, it's going to be much easier to, to work with this. If I'm receiving the scan data from an external source, I might not know in what order they scanned the building, but you can assume that it's from the bottom up to the top or from the top down, depending. And you can play with the number of scan locations that you actually have on in your visibility as well. You can also assign them different colors. So if you know that scan one to scan 30, for example, are all the ground floor, I could go and assign a single color to them as well, just again, so that I know what those scan locations represent. If you do have multiple monitors, don't forget that you can always tear off one of your views and dock this view permanently onto another monitor. This feature might definitely be something that you would want to take advantage of. If you would want to isolate certain floors of your point cloud data, so all of level one, all of level two, for example, don't forget that from your 3D view, you can always use the orient to view feature to orient yourself to a particular floor plan and see only the data on that floor plan. This makes modeling per floor a lot cleaner and a lot easier to see all of the joins and required information. Also remember when modeling from a floor plan view, you do have a view range to consider. If you scroll down your properties and select view range, you can leave it to the default view range that Revit gives you. You can also lower your cut plane to see information down lower to the floor. And you can also increase that and should increase it to see whether there's other things in that level that you are missing. For example, we can see that there's a bit of a mezzanine level over here, which we otherwise miss with the cut plane sitting at 1500. So it is important to adjust your view range. Finally, to increase the efficiency and accuracy of the modeling process, it is extremely useful to have the point cloud file open in recap and placed on another monitor while modeling. In recap, you have access to what I refer to as mirror balls. Mirror balls are locations where the scanner was placed to scan and they capture 360 degree photos. These mirror balls allow you to quickly verify and confirm what is there in the scan data versus what still needs to be modeled. So those are a couple of tips and tricks or at least considerations that you can think about before beginning a scan to BIM project. I hope that you found this helpful and if you have any questions as always please leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. See you in the next one.